When we recite the Birkat Tamazon, the blessing after we eat on Shabbat and holidays, we preface it with Psalm 126, known as Shir Hamalot, the Song of Ascents. And the poem describes the feeling of the people upon their return from exile to their beloved Zion. The psalm praises God for the great things he has done and proclaims the famous quote, those who sow in tear shall reap in joy. I've always loved those words, which have been such an inspiration, the civil rights movement and others, but also the feeling expressed by other words in the psalm move me as well. Those words, hayinu kecholmim, we were like dreamers, which can also be translated to mean it was as if we were dreaming. And I think about the image of being like dreamers, of being incredulous, of being overwhelmed by what one sees, of wondering whether or not it was real, of finding it hard to believe that what we saw was in fact reality when I was in the United Arab Emirates a little more than a week ago. Though I've always dreamed and prayed and hoped for it, I would not have imagined that in my lifetime, one of Israel's neighbors, a Muslim country, and an Arab nation who had been hostile, would not just for decades, would not just make peace with Israel, but would embrace that peace. Nor could I have ever imagined that I would be welcomed as a Jew and treated so well as a rabbi at a mosque in an Arab country. Flying from Israel to Dubai entailed flying over and through the airspace of Saudi Arabia. And looking out the window, I wondered, is this real? We were as dreamers. It was like a dream. And once we landed, I experienced the warmth of traditional Arab hospitality. Meeting people who wanted to learn Hebrew, I sensed a sincere desire for positive relations with the Jewish state. Upon learning that I was a rabbi, our guide at the magnificent Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi, dressed in the beautiful flowing white robes worn by Emiratis, said some words to me in Hebrew and told me that he, as well as many of his friends, were studying Hebrew. How to understand this turn of events, as well as the extraordinary strides and progress of beautiful structures and cities sprouting out of what just a few decades ago had just been sand dunes. I thought not only of the dreamers described in the book of Psalms, but I also kept thinking about the verse in Pirkei Avot, where Shimon Rabbi Shimon proclaims the good fortune of the one who is haro'e et hanolad, of the one who sees what is being born, of what is being birthed. Meaning that to view what happens at inception, at the very beginning, to witness progress and to look into the future, as it were, to see the fruits of planting seeds and affording forward thinking, that is a blessing. The United Arab Emirates consists of seven emirates, that united to form a federation in 1971. The discovery of oil in the 1950s and the wealth that flowed as a result obviously has a lot to do with the ability to, to build such impressive tall buildings and structures. In fact, only about 10% of the country are native-born citizens. The founding leader of the UAE, Sheikh Zayed ben Sultan al Nahyan had told his people, engineers and planners many years ago, that he's looking to that day when the last drop of oil will be taken out of the ground. He was Haro'e et Hanolad. Not every country has a leader who envisions the future and then plans for it. As Amir Hayek, Israel's ambassador to the UAE, told us, the Emirates look to Israel and to the United States to see the benefits of cooperation, of what comes from using Israeli technology and know-how to find solutions to problems such as water shortages, renewable energy, healthcare, educational programs, science, and agriculture. As revolutionary as the signing of a treaty normalizing relations with Israel was, it was preceded by many and a series of baby steps. Years of quiet, behind-the-scenes relations that set the tone and built the foundation and the infrastructure that made trust and cooperation possible. And these steps could only happen because they were predicated upon a spirit and a philosophy of openness and of tolerance. 
The power of that vision is what helped to drive the moves that motivated the reconciliation and shows what can be accomplished when a visionary leader is determined to set a course for his people of peaceful coexistence. In appreciation and in recognition of the atmosphere of tolerance and acceptance, the fledgling Jewish community decided to commission and present a Torah scroll to Sheikh Mohammed ben Zayed in memory of his father, the late Sheikh Zayed ben Sultan al Nahyan, and that he had tears in his eyes when he accepted and received the gift from the Jewish community. Our our Talmud quotes Rabbi Hillel as having said, The world is founded upon three things, upon Torah, upon worship, and deeds of loving kindness. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel taught that the world stands upon three things. He said it stands upon principles of justice, of truth, and of peace. Sheikh Zayed also believes in three foundational principles. As he taught, as expressed in the magnificent Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque and elsewhere, his three guideposts were inscribed in beautiful Arabic letters and in English on the walls of the mosque, peace, tolerance, and coexistence. Israel's ambassador liked what is happening, likened what is happening. It's as if two cousins who had never met and who had been separated for decades, but felt a need and desire to catch up after meeting each other they wanted to make up for lost time. Both countries are looking to establish meaningful, meaningful long-term relations, including tourism and trade and commercial agreements. When Ambassador Hayek spoke with his counterpart, the UAE ambassador to Israel, he reported that the Emiratis working in the embassy in Tel Aviv said, we've been fooled for 50 years. And the Israelis on his staff in Abu Dhabi expressed similar reactions as well. Now in Israel, there was no objection, no opposition to the Abraham Accords, which the ambassador pointed out, as many of us mo know, is most unusual because Israelis disagree about just about everything. But the impact has ripple effects and it's far reaching because even Jordan and Egypt, who have had treaties with Israel, but it's been a cold piece, have now in recent months made overtures to improve their relations as well. To give you an example and a sense of the attitude that I'm referring to that we found, the person in charge of designing the Abrahamic family house had told us that the original design, motivated to a large extent by the visit of Pope Francis in 2019, called for a mosque and a church. Sheikh Mohammed ben Zayed insisted, however, that without a synagogue, this house of Abraham means nothing. While the exterior of the three buildings is somewhat similar, each is of equal size and material. The interior design of each is unique, to be faithful, to reflect the specific requirements of each religion's house of worship. Our host for Shabbat, my friend of many years, Rabbi Eli Abadi, came up with a name for the synagogue, calling it Moses ben Maimon, the Maimonides Synagogue, a tribute to the great medieval philosopher, physician, and rabbi, who was and is venerated not just by Jewish, but by Muslim and Christian theologians to this very day. The purpose of this Abrahamic family house is to promote peaceful exist coexistence with each religion, each faith celebrating its uniqueness and respecting the other, showing that the true meaning of inclusion, equity, and diversity is not assimilation or sameness, but rather celebrating and accepting the uniqueness of each. In 2020, Shortly after the dramatic announcement of the agreement of the accord reached between Israel and the UAE, I wrote a column in JNS, the Jewish News Syndicate, in which I described this as a very hopeful moment. And I wrote, quote, the accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates is a game changer that radically uproots and challenges assumptions which have guided peacemaking efforts since the 1967 Six-Day War. The groundbreaking agreement introduces a whole new paradigm and supplants the long-held prevailing notion that the way to achieve peace in the region was for Israel to reach first an agreement with the Palestinians. Noting that the UAE does not have a history of feeding its people hateful anti-Semitic lies about Jews and Israelis, they were not captive of harmful propaganda 
and chose not to hold, be held captive to stubborn Palestinian obstinance and ref their refusal to allow for progress. So then I went on to write the real question, the Palestinian apologist who placed the burden and blame for the lack of progress at the feet of Israel is will they have the courage to question their assumptions? Rather than pressure Israel to make further concessions while excusing Palestinian violence and overlooking that glorifying of that violence, are they willing to recognize that their support doesn't actually help the cause of peace, nor does it further the cause of the Palestinians? Appeasement and obsessive focus on Israeli concessions only emboldens extremist demands and encourages the misguided belief that the Palestinians should continue to stay away from the negotiating table, turn down offers to establish a Palestinian state, and reject attempts to resolve the conflict. And so I concluded the article by paraphrasing John Lennon, who said, war is over if you want it. Palestinians should realize, as the UAE, as Bahrain, and Morocco, and Sudan, and Jordan, and Egypt have come to realize, peace can be achieved if they but want it. Their conflict with Israel can be over if they but want it. As I told the UAE Ambassador Yusuf al Oteba earlier this week, one of the true architects and guiding lights of this agreement and of this peace accord, and a true shining light in the world, there are several midrashim which remind us we, can, we make the choice of which path we take. Fire, for example, can be used to destroy and to tear down buildings and other things, or it can be used to meld metal to build. Similarly, money, which in Hebrew is mamon, shares the same numeric value in gematria as the word sulam, meaning ladder, symbolizing we can use our God-given wealth and resources to either ascend or descend. And Baruch Hashem, thank God. Thank God there are those who have realized that we should ascend, and when we do, we carry each other together to higher heights for truly the guiding principles of peace and tolerance and coexistence were felt there. May they be the prevailing notion in our world, in the Middle East and elsewhere. May we be guided by those ideals and let us say, Amen.